Today we're working on a Bobcat 753. I'm going to show you how to rebuild the lift cylinders. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove the lift cylinder itself. This is 9 16 You want to get a wrench and a socket. All right. I use my pliers to just grab the lip of the, the pin and pull it out. All right. So using a 7 8 wrench, I was able to loosen both of them. And so we're good. Uh, this is 7 eighths, and then this size was uh, 13 sixteenths for that one right there. And so uh, these look like these are replacement hoses. They're not the original ones anyway. So right now I'm loosening the main nut that keeps all the dirt and grease out of it. And you can use channel locks. They also make a special tool that fits into the holes. So you're just going to take and rotate it. It's threaded in there pretty good. It's aluminum, so you want to be careful. All right, it's best to do this outside or over a catchment system. We're going to do is put a crowbar in here. A lot of fluid. We'll put sawdust off down. Okay, it gets a little stick. <clears throat> so next, we need to remove this nut. And this is another thing best to do outside before you take it to your kitchen table. All right, now this one's hard to break loose. Sometimes they have Loctite on them. We got a crowbar through the main eye, and we got this is a inch and one eighth socket. There we go. So now that we got the nut off, we're going to disassemble this. And um, go ahead and look at your rebuild kit. And you actually get another uh, nut right there, so you're good. We just want to stack it in such a way. We take it off. And we stack it up. That's how we do our assembly. And so this ring, there's probably no marking on that or bevel straight up like that. And so on. We'll slide that off next. And uh, yeah. All right. So as I was showing you earlier, this this um, end cap had definitely some damage to it, and uh, the O-ring is where it was actually leaking. It was actually the inner seal. So um, you know, hopefully we can reuse this. All right. Now I've cleaned this, um, and I got the gaskets out. Now you can see there is a little bit of damage on the top end, but I don't think that'll be a problem. We'll see. But we got to put this ring in here, and it has O-ring, and the O-ring goes down, and it goes inside here. Um, basically, you're going to try to make like a heart shape out of it, and there's going to be a couple of takes of this. But um, you take your needle nose, see that heart needs to, okay, this is how I do it, watch this. like but into the groove that's the hardest part okay see that last little kink see how it's like that we want to keep that centered work that in with your thumb all right so I got all the other washers in uh, this one is easy peasy just snaps in um, the hardest one was that one inside as you saw me do um, next is this giant o-ring here I did and then I put my flat washer against here and then my brown o-ring here which it could be black depending on your kit so this this part's done uh, we only got a couple more washers to put in and so this thing is like the stopper on the end of the shaft and this is a neoprene or nylon washer it does not have a lot of flex to it we got a replacement one for that and actually underneath there is an o-ring and we have that too and so what we're going to do is we're going to take our hook tool and we're going to bend up and it's okay if we break this so now we're going to put this new o-ring in, got the old o-ring out and the old uh, washer type thing and we're just going to sit it on here and we're going to poke it down and then we're going to take our fingers and roll it around the edge. Got the o-ring in and next, this is the hard part, I would heat this up just a tad and we're going to stretch it and try to get it in there carefully. It's a All right, so everything's reassembled, spacer's on, everything's good to go. Now we got to put it back in the tube casing. and. Uh, that's a little bit difficult. We'll do that next and um, tighten this down and we'll be good. So now I just got to tighten up this bolt and then we can reassemble. Go ahead and take this to. This is the hard part. Now we're just kind of pushing this all back together, which is hard. Gently. OK. 
Okay, that's the first one. Okay, now we need to tighten this up as best we can. All right, here's the finished product. No leaks, both cylinders rebuilt. And it's not been leaking, so I'm happy with that. Um, I left it a little bit loose. This is the one that has the damage lipped on it a little bit. But no leaks on this one either. I left this a little bit loose um, and I tried to burp it and I let a little bit of the fluid pass by and then I tightened it up. And that may have gotten some of the air out, but to be honest with you, I would run it uh, probably in the course of running it maybe a day and a half. It's going to get those bubbles out. And you might experience a little softness every once in a while where it doesn't want to move. It's going to be trying to compress air, basically. And eventually it will work those air bubbles out and then you'll be good. So cost-wise, uh, I was quoted um, just about uh, 100 and 220 per cylinder rebuilt. The kit cost me exactly 20 bucks on Amazon. You can get them for cheaper on eBay for about eight bucks, but I wanted it now, and so I needed it shipped fast, and they had the fastest shipping. And so, uh, yeah.